Tapatio, Salsa Picante, or Hot Sauce, was started in 1971 here in Maywood, wow, Vermont. Wow, it's era. that recent? Yeah, it's not old. Sorry. Well, don't be so defensive. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> it's it was, a young I, man's hot I, sauce. I, I, I did this one first, and then I went to Al Pato. I'm like, 1840? Uh, yeah. So what, what, where, what area was it? Maywood, Vernon area. Okay. And it was uh, started by Jose Luis Saavedra. I couldn't find too much about Saavedra, um, his upbringing, other than he came to Los Angeles by way of Mexico. In one passage in an article I read, he was from Mexico City. In another, I read he was from... Um, See you dead to Mexico, whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, CDMX, uh, Guadalajara, which is a state in Jalisco, oh, which is in the state of Jalisco. And when he got here, he found work at the aerospace manufacturing plant in Vernon. Well, what spurred... The, you mean the sausage factory in Vernon. <laughs> uh, aerospace slash slaughterhouse. I don't know what that's... <laughs> they slaughtered planes and turned them into hot dogs. There's only one plant in Vernon. They do everything there. <laughs> well, what spurred Savidra to start his own company? During the 60s, the hot sauce that would one day become a household item started making the rounds and becoming a hit come lunchtime at Savidra's last job working at the, like I said when he was working at the aerospace manufacturer lunchtime he would be serving this hot sauce that him and his wife were making uh, they would make batches at home and he would take it to work and like just I said, for like the the work like yeah just friends. for the workers he would make it for his own food but then he started taking it to work and then they probably had a little bit of it and it's like okay, I can make some for him right now. <laughs> I'm gonna make a decoy hot <laughs> sauce now <laughs> <laughs> oh isn't that hot sauce bad and he's like mm. <laughs> nice hot sauce nerdling <laughs> they push him over <laughs> right into the slaughter <laughs> chamber <laughs> and everyone everyone his wife and all the people that were be serving it at his work was saying you should probably bottle this and sell this and he was like nah it's too much trouble and he was always shrugging it off now that's something I can relate to <laughs> <laughs> you should do this thing nah probably not is that food I can't eat it nah probably not well he wouldn't be shrugging it off for long because in 1971 there was a recession and Jose Luis Savidra was laid off from the plant where he worked he then took on two part time jobs to, just to keep his family afloat his, his wife and his three kids and on top of these two jobs his wife now is pushing very hard for Jose to start his own company bottling this hot sauce and that was starting to sound like a better idea than working these like two jobs <laughs> but what what would you call it well he was was looking for something catchy and he wanted to use something like familiar to him and so he used his wife's family name and the hot sauce company he was opening was going to be called Cuervo. <laughs> If you're familiar, Cuervo is a And he name. wanted to use uh, his cousin's first name, Jose. <laughs> Cuervo is the name of a famous tequila, Jose Cuervo, of which Dolores Cuervo is related. Oh, weird. That's, so his that's wife, quite a family. It is. His wife is Dolores Cuervo of the Cuervo family, which makes tequila. We'll put in pen in that. But just so you know that when Top of the Oak came out, it was called Cuervo. He opened a small plant in Maywood, and on top of his two jobs, he started his own business, his own small business. Jose Luis Savidra. En endless energy, apparently, really? for this guy. Yeah. Savidra was over 40, so spoke limited English and had no real business background, but he went forward anyways. This which guy's is sounding more and more relatable <laughs> to me. <laughs> Those first few, few years were really rough. Jose hired a worker to run the plant while he worked his other job. So basically, he'd pick this guy up in the morning, his worker, and drive him to the Cuervo plant. Then Savidra would go to his first job. He'd come back on his break and check in on his employee and see how he's doing, give him instructions for the rest of the day for bottling and labeling and everything, then go to his second job. He'd come back later with his three kids to the plant. Jose Luis Jr., little Dolores, not the mom, and Jackie. <laughs> not the mama. Not the mama. I don't I, I don't like saying Dolores Jr. for f females, but I, that's probably acceptable. The four of them would finish orders for the day while the kids either did homework or napped or some of them would help out. That's the humble beginnings of Tapatio, and I love it. Like, it's really like a family business that starts from like a guy has two other jobs and has to make this work. Why couldn't the Cuervo side of the family kick in a little money to make this easier? I don't know. They've no, never yeah, stated. Yeah, we support you. Yeah, uh, we'll as, support you uh, spiritually. Yeah, as yeah. much tequila as you want as long as it's one bottle a month they did everything by hand he said i you know i removed the stem i grind the peppers and i even applied the glue to the labels i did he, they did everything do you know what kind of peppers they use or no i didn't i didn't look into that that much i was i was spelled down by the story. peppers uh making it was only half the battle and trying to get the stores to stock it would prove a little bit more difficult than actually making and putting and bottling in it uh, it was really tiring he would leave the bottled hot sauce at markets in east la for consignment meaning like they would only get paid whatever they sold off his luck changed through a japanese owned grocery store store which ordered 10 cases of 24 bottles which was a massive order for them at the time that's something i was going to discuss later but now's a good time too tapatio is well loved outside of the latino area like non-latino non-mexican restaurant settings really love tapatio you'll find it at like the asian restaurants and stuff it's a fixture on tables of restaurants across cultures and los angeles of course is a prime way to see the different places they would get displayed sometimes i sometimes i don't like that <laughs> because 
<laughs> We're still talking about the Proud Boys, right? I, I uh, hate uh, cross cultural uh, <laughs> because, items because sometimes I'll go to a place like a a, a lot of Middle Eastern places right. will have tapatio yeah. on the table, but like that flavor doesn't go with right. that for me. Some people would disagree with you. Yeah, um, well, they're wrong. I see. I, I can see you wanting like I want this culture spicy yeah, food. I want, I want. I want their hot sauce. Yeah, I don't want to just like it. It, it almost at this point it all it has almost become like ketchup. Like, I think right. both of the ones we're about to talk about have almost become like ketchup right where it's just like you got salt you got pepper you got tapatio, tapatio you got yeah. my thing you got if, if you ask for hot ketchup. sauce it's it's probably going to be tapatio that comes yeah. out and i love tapatio but yeah. it, it doesn't fit all occasions right, right right okay which is why you'll see we have a a whole array of different hot sauces in my home of what goes with uh, what a friend of savidra also told him like hey I, I got an order for your company for 15 cases and savidra's response was are you out of your mind? <laughs> it will take me weeks to like, my I, kids <laughs> have finals. <laughs> like that's how little their beginnings were. We're like, we got a big yeah. order. And I was like, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you? Success is an inconvenience at that point. <laughs> we're not ready for 15 <laughs> cases in a week. Uh, the company was struggling those early years. And because profits were so low, he had to lay off his one employee and rely on his, <laughs> his interns. Son. Yeah. His, his interns, which being his kids on helping him out. But help was about to come in the form of a lawsuit because after Same. Thank God. Oh, thank God. Because after four years of Savidra's hot sauce operating under the name Cuervo, the real Jose Cuervo company came after them and asked them to stop. Wait a minute. His family came up? His wife's can, family was like, sued. hey, can you... Yeah, they, they made a lawsuit and like, hey, can you stop using so our name? So they didn't name? even ask first? Yeah, I don't know if that was in a... They didn't inter, um, the kids did an interview with The Hundreds, this publication called The Hundreds, and I don't know if that came up or not, whether like that was mentioned by the Cuervo family. Like, Cuervos. hey, can you not? That's how they got to the top. Yeah. You don't get to the top of tequila mountain without cutting your own family's throat <laughs> how sad this story is tequila fighting salsa um but the ball was sort of in savage's court because he owned the state trademark in california to sell a product uh, named cuervo and uh, those jose cuervo tequila did not uh, the tequila would be counter suit <laughs> <laughs> like a legal cobra kai <laughs> courtroom kai <laughs> it's sweep the leg still works in a courtroom <laughs> setting i'll allow it be strong daniel be strong in the courtroom <laughs> bow to the judge now bow to each other Sue. Like I was saying, the tequila would be infringing on the salsa's copyright in California. A deal was worked out between the two companies and Savidra sold the name and the California distribution rights to his Jose Cuervo International Inc. and used the cash from the buyout to purchase the production equipment to get their salsa picante off the ground. Now we can make 15 bottles. Yeah, now, with that, now that's no problem. 16 bottles. Here's the weird thing. If we if we had a Patreon level where we had side stories, this would be a Patreon uh, level yeah, for we've a side got, story. I feel like there's a few in this episode. Yeah. Which, hey, if that sounds like a good idea to you, let us know let and us we'll know. create one. Yeah. And we will charge you at the out and up the wazoo <laughs> for it. So Jose's wife's Dolores is directly related to Jose Cuervo. Got it. Tapatio's main competitor. It, is Jose Cuervo a real person or is that just like a I generic I imagine name? it's a real person okay. at, at some point. Tap- <laughs> now who's Don Miguel? <laughs> who's Pepsi Cola? Tapatio's main competitor is and always has been Cholula hot sauce. Right. Which in my mind, there is no competition. Not, not at all. Cholula hot sauce is owned by Jose Cuervo International. I don't know when they purchased oh, that. Oh, weird. So there's a tapatio right. named Cuervo, directly yeah. related to Cuervo. <laughs> Instead of joining, they made them stop calling themselves Cuervo. They bought the rights and then they went for another hot sauce, which is the competitor this of is, tapatio. This is almost like the monster energy thing no, of like yeah, Coca-Cola yeah. trying to like, if I can't beat them, I'm going to buy their competition. <laughs> That, that's really weird. It's really weird. I don't understand it. And I, I bet, and the kids are alive. I could have asked them, like, what's the deal with that? But I don't know. It wasn't in the hundreds article, son. <laughs> what about Gourmet Sleuth? You love Gourmet Sleuth? <laughs> I don't love him. I need him. I don't like working with a guy. He's quite orny. Or, orny. Ornery. He talks in puzzles. He has a guy named Watson, but he only uses Watson as a soundboard. <laughs> he keeps doing some sort of powder out of a little case he carries around. And he, oh, he has needles. I don't know. I think he likes vaccines. I think he's pro vax. That pig is pro vax. Not until it's approved by the FDA. It got approved. Oh, uh, what a, who, how about it's approved by the NBA? <laughs> what do the Proud Boys say about it? Are they pro? I love that Trump was like, he should get vaccinated. People were like, no! <laughs> like, oh, this is bigger than him now? Whoa. I thought this was all about him. So now he has the means of production. Right. But he needs a brand name, a new brand name. Okay. And then it came to him. Charo. Uh, he <sighs> bought 10,000 labels and started selling his hot sauce under the name Charo. What? Uh, yeah, but was quickly sued This because- guy has the, like, the, what, like, I'm going to name this one Murder <laughs> She Wrote. <laughs> he was quickly sued because despite what the state <laughs> of California record state. Isn't that what Charo says? Chet, chet. Chet, what is it? 
Cha cha Charo. Cha cha Charo. Charo. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so they, they they go for the name Charo, and it was quickly sued because despite what the state of California record said, there was already a name a uh, company named Charo. So ten thousand labels wasted. He's like, I printed them already. <laughs> so what to call this new salsa picante? How about how about churros? Um, <laughs> Churro bread. <hot> sauce. <laughs> well, what to call this salsa picante? Well, Ceviche's kids were all born in Guadalajara, and anything that originates from Guadalajara is called a tapatio. So why not what, honor? What do you mean? What does that mean? Uh, I got to it. So why not honor his kids and have a term familiar in their community and call the new salsa picante a tapatio? Yeah, anything from Guadalajara is typically uh, referred to as a tapatio. I didn't look up what tapatio means, though. Oh, it's just something from there. What is that? What do you mean, like some like a? It could be a person. It could be a car. I heard like a- nouns, like a person. They also like call things that come from Guadalajara tapatios. What? Like know. instead of saying like that thing from Guadalajara? Yeah, they'll say tapatio. That tapatio? I bet it served initially as like things and then like a person would come over like he's a tapatio too and then people like ha 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 but then they just stuck. Well, it sounds like someone's uncle. Tio. Uncle Tapa. <laughs> He likes tapas. That's this is why we call him Uncle Tapas. <laughs> um, we're not very creative in yeah. our family. Okay, so then so he calls the company Tapatio, and then they were quickly sued again. Um, <laughs> this time by a major company by Jose Tapatio, <laughs> Conagra, and Del Monte Foods, who oh, had a wow. similarly named product. It looks like patio. I bet it's patio. Hmm. But it looks like patio. Con Agra and Del Monte were assuming that Savidra was putting ta in front of patio to, to patio. work to patio to work on the brand name familiarity and cash in on customer confusion, okay. which he was not. It, um, it, although with this guy's track record, maybe, maybe he was. Maybe he, was. <laughs> maybe he feels like a person who sees a label and then it doesn't occur to him. He's like Robin Williams stealing jokes. It wasn't occurring to me. I was stealing a joke. It was, I was a, just it's part riffing. of my process. Yeah, it's part I just of my sucked process. up whatever was in the room. I absorbed labels and then I just spit them out and I don't know where I saw them. <laughs> he knew that this giant company would crush him if he them in court but the case i guess went to the supreme court but in the end oh he won God. against them because they the able people to, versus tapatio people versus tapatio <laughs> patio Del- versus tapatio and he was able to continue using tapatio because he was yeah. able to prove like no it's anything from i'm not infringing on their right to call their thing patio tapatio is a term already which right. they probably but use. who's still around exactly <laughs> del monte food sounds really familiar i think del monte food's very i mean they make ketchup but they make oh, a right, lot right, they right. make a ton of things okay my favorite spicy condiment <laughs> ketchup. ketchup now he's able to use tapatio as a name but they need a logo people have apparently asked several times if the handsome tapatio man who adorns the tapatio bottle if that's a depiction of jose safidra unfortunately no mm-hmm. as the la times puts it he's not the dapper mustachioed sombrero wearing man <laughs> label the sketch is an artist depiction of a true tapatio the label is a way to dignify the appearance of a chato a traditional mexican horseman and gentleman which savitra said has been sullied by inaccurate stereotypes the lighter skin and blue eyes also depict the common features of people who live in the highlands of jalisco so it's a it's actually a depiction of zorro who's also <laughs> copyright <laughs> let's call it masked fighter tapatio's next big strike comes in mid 70s when united western grocers incorporated the largest food distributor they placed their first order for 25 cases and it would be a long relationship that would lead to other deals that would build the company up across the country and lead up to the deal to become a nationwide popular hot sauce. Through the 80s, Savidra got help from his new college age kids, you know, Jose <laughs> Lewis Jr. He's still making them bottle his yeah. hot sauce. The son, Jr., studied medicine in Mexico. Dolores, the daughter, studied law and Jackie studied finances and accounting. And in 1985, they all joined the That's company. That's all that, that, those three those are, are the ingredients three. of Tapatio. That's the <laughs> triad right there. In 1985, they all joined the company to help out and eventually brought their own kids on board so Tapatio is really a family organization, which we love to see. We love in and out uh, We love in and out <laughs> stories. Uh, not related. We no, love in and out We love in and out completely unrelated. <laughs> in and out is also another family organization, which right. the granddaughter is now running. Dolores, the daughter, also married a gentleman named Roche, who studied law and now works for the company on legal matters. So, like, they're just bringing, like, are you related? I'm getting Marry a lawyer. What do you do? Do, yeah. do we know anyone who works in vinegar? Are you attracted <laughs> to any vinegar people? So, during the 80s, Tapatio moved out of the little 750. 50 square foot place in Maywood and they moved to a new place that was like 8,500 square feet less than a mile from their home. As they got more popular in the late 80s, Top of the Hill started releasing the 10 ounce bottles and it was followed by the five ounce bottles. So you see like the taller one and the right, shorter right. one. Well, the they, little ones are too small. Yeah, they are That's too small. It's like two meals. It's good to put in like a purse or something. And be yeah. like, oh, I put them in uh, women's purses in the <laughs> supermarket because I like seeing women get uh, stopped by Flustered. security yeah. uh, on the way out. And be like, oh, you like Top of the Hill? Cool. I like the topper <laughs> my for wife Cholula. Love, my wife loves pork. Tapatio. She's not here. <laughs> Maybe we should hang out sometime and talk salsa. Um, 1989, with their success at the highest... I'm related to Jose Cuervo. <laughs> in 1989, with their success at the highest it had ever been, they introduced the mother load. Mm-hmm. 32-ounce bottle. Oh, my God. Are those the ones that, that don't even have the same top? It's like... Yeah, yeah. It's like a... like a. It's like a jug almost. <laughs> yeah, it's like a jug. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of Valentina. No, I know. I think it's, still, it's like... No, it's, instead it's, of a twist-off, it's like a flip, maybe? Oh, no. I think it's a pointy. It's a sriracha stop top. 
Oh, so really? To I think it's a pointy. All right. That seems more... E I hate having a shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, like yeah. Having, don't make me shake. Listen, chubby checker, don't make me shake. I know what I year it rattle, is. I will rattle. I will roll. I will not shake. By 1996, Savidra and his family realized that they had outgrown the newest facility and had to once again move. So they had to have one made. They couldn't move into a factory. So they had one. They were rich enough now to have one made. The place was big. It was 30,000 square feet. And it would be their new home for Tapatio to grow even bigger. And this is the last place. This is where they are now. By the year 2000, Tapatio had both a gallon size for amusement parks and small packets for oh, fast yeah, food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, seen have, those. Yeah. I, I think they have them at Staples Center. Even. Yeah, I think they do, yeah. In 2010, Tapatio made a distribution deal with Kraft Foods, which expanded Tapatio's reach even farther. And after all these years, Savitra is very tight-lipped about his success, not revealing how much hot sauce he sells or how much money the company makes. He commented that over the years he would sell 1,700 cases in a year, and that's now done in like an hour. Like, Yeah, yeah I'd yeah. imagine. Yeah. He's also never revealed a Tapatio recipe to anybody, mm, only that's that why he... I want to know what the pepper is you need to get a, a gourmet sleuth on the case <laughs> i'm not going to that gum shoe <laughs> that drunk <laughs> that opium addict he, he won't he won't say what the recipe is but he's tried he said that he's tried hundreds of recipes until he finally landed on something unique top of the is gluten-free msg free and sugar-free by 2016 they began releasing dry seasoning for fruits and vegetables and premium meats like smoked sausage with a, a tapatio man on the packages for a while me and melissa were both obsessed with tapatio ruffles oh like lay's know. ruffles yeah it was, it was so good really but they have a lot of different chips that'll have the tapatio guy on really? it. Really? Was that Zorro? I know they have like ramen noodle packets and sunflower yeah, seeds. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. In 2021, and that's it's now their 50th year, 50th anniversary year, and the company is still going strong. They have a thing on their website right now where Fluffy, Gabriel Iglesias, promotes oh tapatio items and tours of factories and cooks things with famous chefs and riffs and He's stuff. He's so funny. He is He's so, so funny. funny. I love him so much. He's funny. You know why I love him? Because he's funny. Because of the Hawaiian shirts. Because of the Hawaiian shirts and he's funny. That's how I know he's funny. And he, uh, for a while, was also the Tapatio man. Him and his, his Chihuahua were on the labels okay. with the, the hat and everything. Uh, I'm glad that you gotta go buy one because limited <laughs> edition. Here, you better put it with edition. your Jar Jar Binks Pepsi can because that's gonna be worth something someday. I would pay so much for a Cholula bottle that had Kyle Canane on it. <laughs> About it, Fluffy said, Tapatio is Mexican royalty and I get to be king for a day. Buddy, you can be king forever. You're so funny. You're so funny in that Hawaiian so shirt. <laughs> fluffy, fluffy, you are not just fluffy, you are also funny. They should call you funny. Their online store is insane. I never realized how badly I want Tapatio products. I don't even like spicy food, but I'm like, I think I want the commemorative Day of the Dead Tapatio oh, face mask cool. where the Tapatio man has a skull painted on his oh, face. I think I need that. The shirts are incredible. They have like socks and face masks. Um, Savitra continues to work there seven days a week at the age of 82. Uh, Jose Luis Jr. is now vice president of Tapatio. His sister, Dolores Savitra McCoy, is now partner and director of merchandising, doing a great job. And their sister, Jacqueline Savitra, Mora is partner and chief financial officer. Tapatio is a number one hot sauce on the West Coast, the third best selling hot sauce in the United States, and is exported mm. to more than 30 countries. Let's drink some right now. <laughs> Let's, Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs>